Tiddy Burp. Ducking a wig on a farmer's life for me. And begin working out the best way to present their <laughs> rag upon the board. Rod Stewart's wife gets her kit off on casualty. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, 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 Mrs. Stewart. <laughs> and builders bum bread on Great British Food Revival. And, and it hasn't had a life. <laughs> Four to 30 minutes in a warm place is all it should mean. Have you ever tried dropping in the words Lord High Admiral into the conversation just for fun? It's actually quite difficult to crowbar it in. Absolutely wonderful object here in the collection. But tell me, as, as the curator, is it used at all? Oh, yes, it uh, is used um, relatively frequently. It's the Lord High Admiral's Verge, which is the Lord High Admiral's staff of office. And when the Lord High Admiral visits, um, this is always carried ahead of the Lord High Admiral. <laughs> you can do it. This was, of course, Antiques Roadshow. And I don't know about you, but on a Sunday night, I like nothing better than sitting down in front of it and relaxing with a cup of tea. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> what on earth? What is that? Um, I I'll hardly... Whisper, I'll whisper in your ear. Oh! It's a mummified dog's willy. <laughs> a mummified dog's willy. <laughs> How much was that worth? Is that worth £100? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> of course, it was worth a lot more to the dog. <laughs> There's a new hairdressing show on the box. Yeah, yeah, great British hairdresser. So let's meet a few of the contestants. There's Sean Nolan. I'm Sean Nolan, I'm 28. I've been hairdressing about 10 years. Well, as a kid, I wanted to be an archaeologist. I was very serious. I still am quite academic. Cutting hair is all about angles and geometry and shape. Colouring hair is all about physics and chemistry. No, it isn't. <laughs> well, you need a pair of scissors and some shampoo. <laughs> if my memory serves me correctly. <laughs> the main judge is hairdresser James Brown, who gave us some fascinating insights into the hairstyles of the stars. Quite often, a lot of celebrities, because they have their hair done every single day, one of the biggest, biggest tricks they use is they use a wig that looks very similar to their natural hair. If you've ever wondered why a lot of celebrities' hair's in a bob one week, the next week it's down to here, it hasn't grown overnight. Oh, hasn't it? <laughs> Actually, I'm a celeb. Mm. And I wear a wig. Yeah, I'm wearing it right now. It's a, it's a bald wig, yeah. If I, if I just take it off... <laughs> yeah. 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 Rob Brydon, eat your heart out. Yeah, yeah. James had a, a nice little tip. Uh, oh, hang on, I'll just take that off. It's, just it's, mm, it's a bit itchy. Yeah. James had a neat little tip on how to find out what shape your face is. A great way to tell your own face shape, come over to a mirror, yeah. and if you grab a lipstick and you just copy the shape of your face onto the mirror. OK. <laughs> so you can see from that, you've got your classic beauty squared jawed face. Yeah, well, it's useful to know, isn't it? I mean, see, the method I've been using up until now is this. Uh, the... Yeah, you, uh, you ink your face up. <laughs> and then you, uh... Onto a bit of paper. And then you, uh... You draw around the paper. Uh, and there we are, it's sort of a bit like an egg shape. We happy? Yes, I'm happy, yes. It's a bit schizophrenic. <laughs> it's like... Someone's done this side and someone else has done this side. Mm -hmm. What kind of woman would want to wear this style? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like my new haircut, Harry? I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm not sure it suits your face shape. <laughs> Draw around it. Yeah, you see, you've got more of a blob-shaped face. Yeah. Which seems something a bit more symmetrical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was very sorry to see that Peaches Geldof was unable to control her wind problem on her new show, OMG, this week. Everybody's obsessed in a little way about Twilight and <laughs> Robert Pattinson and 
all of those guys. So are you into are you into Twilight? Um, I, I enjoy. <laughs> OMG! <laughs> <laughs> or should I say SBD? <laughs> Sound a bit deadly. <laughs> so Peaches, what's the show about? We will be naughty, right? No. I have nothing to hide. Do you? No. We've all been misunderstood. Or have we? Yes, all right. I weed in the swimming pool where nobody was looking. <laughs> My friend egged me on. I shouldn't have done it. And I apologise to everyone at Centre Parks. <laughs> yeah. She had some interesting guests, though. I'm surrounded by people who did scream a little bit when we talked about vampires. Yeah. This so-called diva, in particular. Oh, my God, me? Yeah, of course. I'd love to be a vampire. I'm so <laughs> mad at you. <laughs> so brilliant. What is it about vampires, then, that you want to... you like It's so just much? basically, like, the whole attitude and the whole, like, basically, confidence of it. Yeah. I just love it. It's really brilliant. Oh, I admire you. You're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, in the old days, people like him would have been mopped up by Big Brother. <laughs> Peaches did us the great favour of introducing the world to Alison. I love getting my nails done, like, really sparkly and glittery. I love having designs on my nails. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm such a girly girl. I love being pampered. Do you really? <laughs> Hello, Alison speaking. Hello, Alison, yeah. <laughs> I've got the application form for Snog Marry Avoid, yeah. I'll put it in the post. <laughs> Avoid. <laughs> Peaches has managed to come up with a new catchphrase. Are you revealing a little bit more about your fetishes oh, here yes, tonight? Maybe. <laughs> Bring on the fetish. Bring on the fetish. Bring on the fetish. Yeah, it's not exactly... Bring on the wall! <laughs> Let's just see what's happening at Stansted Airport. The person that used the toilet, done what he had to do on the floor, <laughs> wrote his hands inside the, the bowl, and instead of using the, the paper, the toilet tissue, to clean whatever was supposed to be clean, he done some uh, drawers in the walls that um, would actually poo. <laughs> Sorry about that, but... <laughs> You know, when you're on holiday, it's nice to let off a bit of steam. <laughs> <laughs> this was Stansted, the inside story. And I always like to hear what's coming up on a show so I know whether to stay tuned. Coming up, the dangers of runway works at the dead of night. Mm, runway works, not, not sure. <laughs> Dodging planes in the fog. Fog. <laughs> and how to bring in a plane. Oh, that might go in handy. <laughs> so, how do you bring in a plane, then? This is the keep coming signal. To turn onto the centre line, it's one arm down and keep marshalling with the other. When the plane's lined up, both arms signal to straighten up. Yeah, yeah. One arm down and keep marshalling with the other. When the plane's lined up, both arms signal to straighten up. As the plane approaches the stop arrow, the pilot is signaled to slow down. Slow down! <laughs> slow down! <laughs> when the wands are in a cross position, it's time to come to a halt. Halt! <laughs> Just so everyone knows that's it, one one goes up in the air and is then turned off. <laughs> Which brings us to our unexpectedly high-voiced man from the past of the week. Unexpectedly high-voiced man from the past of the week. In a lifetime for me, we won the luck in the United States, and maybe I better tell them something too. Where is under pressure now, and is it me or are the teachers in our schools getting younger? And that's just brilliant. That describes it better than I ever could. <laughs> Yeah, this show set out to ask a few questions about our parenting skills. It's not just parents who are stressed. Everywhere you turn, being a child and a young adult nowadays, it's high pressured. So what, as parents, can we do to make sure our children lead happy lives? Big bag of Harry Bone, a trampoline in the garden. <laughs> Seems to be the job for mine. 
<laughs> of course, the days of the traditional nuclear family are long gone. British family life has been transformed over the past 60 years. The traditional family unit, the married mum and dad living with their children, has given way to step-parents, gay parents, and above all else, single parents. Hmm, now, I, I like <laughs> single parents. I, I like step-parents. I like gay parents too, but which is better? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Plain thinks it's a shark on Stansted the Inside Story. Stansted's runway is surrounded by 240 hectares. Short sighted tie on the story of variety with Michael Grade. Top of the bill, that's who was going to get the people in. <laughs> the audience would expect. And Kirsty Young gets saucy on the British at work. My own family have worked in shipbuilding and retail in construction and clerical jobs, and in confectionery. My granny topped off your walnut whip. <laughs> What's changing room star Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen up to these days? <laughs> nice to see him back on prime time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh, hello, Ruler. Hello, you. <laughs> and no, I'm not washing my hair tonight. Or anybody else's. Dinner would be divine, darling. Mm -hmm. You can pick me up at eight. And no pitching up early to catch me in my towel. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might just leave it till nine to be on the safe side. <laughs> I don't know about you. But I fancy a bit of music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that flaming music off. <laughs> Sorry, Shirley. Uh, yeah, I forgot she's in the flat underneath. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just try this. It's a bit of fun. Yeah, I, I put a bit of spin on it. I can sometimes get it into her kitchen. <laughs> It's funny. Slam dunk. I haven't lost it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This was EastEnders and the ongoing struggle between Phil, Shirley and Glenda. And I was struggling to understand what they were alluding to. Nah, because if you thought he had, you wouldn't be here. I mean, you wouldn't still be marrying him, would you? If I really believed that Phil dipped his licorice in Glenda's sherbet, neither of them would have any teeth by now. I mean, I can, I can see why Shirley's annoyed. I mean, you can get germs off someone's licorice. You know? <laughs> My sister ended up with a cold sore. Glenda made out a picnic and I tucked in. You know, that's what men do. Was that before or after you nicked a bit of her sherbet? <laughs> You've just found out that your fella has been weeding some other woman's garden. Is it the same garden where she had the picnic in with Glenda? <laughs> oh, I'm confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. They're talking about sex. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're terribly coy on EastEnders, aren't they? <laughs> I definitely think Phil should go in for a checkup, though. When I look at you, do you want to know what I, what I see? I see the most beautiful woman in the world. Cataracts. <laughs> they... Sorry, Shirley. They've got this new way of acting out the plot on Easties these days to save time. Plot cakes. Yes, instead of an elaborate scene with four pages of dialogue, they use a plot cake. I think actions speak louder than words. And sometimes, actions and words together speak even louder. Do so you want you pull back the cloth? 
Clock cake. <laughs> Clock cake, yeah. Ian produces the will you marry me again cake and Jane responds with her own. Do you want you to pull back the cloth? <laughs> <laughs> See how the residents of Whiteley Retirement Home are getting along on when teenage meets old age. Tonight, I'm um, taking Roy for a new experience. I'm gonna take him to Gay Bar in Southampton where they have karaoke on a Tuesday night. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> See if he survives. <laughs> no dinner, because eating is cheating. I'm not getting drunk and losing control. <laughs> Absolutely, Roy. What kind of example would that be to set to the nation's teenagers? <laughs> Lead me on, man. Lead me on, boy. <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. your life in their hands now on the excellent BBC Three, which follows the lives of our young doctors as they start work. And I was a little bit worried about Dr John Barkley. He's a big lad and at times he has to move fast. The crash alarm has gone off again. Another patient needs urgent assistance. Level two rehabs place. I don't know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> I have rest. I've got a flying place there. I can see what... What happens when we get there? At least John has got the support of his pals at the rugby club. <laughs> John Barkley, you suffer from morbid obesity. <laughs> and you're gonna die young, John Barkley. Yeah, a bit harsh. <laughs> I wonder what Heston Blumenthal's up to these days. Heston sprays a sperm-like smell over the heads of the bosses. <laughs> well, we've all done it. Please. This was Heston's Mission Impossible, and I like the way at the end of the show they seal him back up into a Tupperware container. But it's down to them to take this forward. <laughs> this week, Heston was trying to fix the food on planes, and one of Heston's big discoveries was that the atmosphere inside the planes is extremely dry, which reduces your ability to taste. Probably just as well with his nosh. <laughs> So Eston comes up with a lovely solution. You have got a tray in front of you with 13 experiences to just turn your... Before they try anything, every passenger is required to nasal douche. <laughs> a nasal douche? As if air travel wasn't uncomfortable enough already. <laughs> How's it work then? Right, so here we've got a glass of wine and this is a nasal douche. A couple of jets of this up the nostrils, moisturise them, clear them and the same wine should taste better after a nasal douche. Should. Yeah. Or douche it spray cream. <laughs> Who's been mucking about with my stuff? <laughs> Give us an extra strong mint, something just to take the taste away. <laughs> he adds a touch of magic, a pill that turns into a scented hand towel. <laughs> What's he have to muck about with everything for? <laughs> He decides to make a big, strong shepherd's pie with a flavour that will cut through, even up in the air, and he'll do anything to achieve it. Flavours were so prominent that it did make you think, is there a big chunk of salt in here? And the fact that it isn't is fantastic to know. It, it was just trying to show you guys, look. Yeah, yeah, I get that. 
this is what you can do. But it's still, it's still a shepherd's pie, but it's like a shepherd's pie on steroids. A shepherd's pie on steroids? That's dangerous, ain't it? <laughs> it's a shepherd's pie on steroids! Shepherd's pie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a close one. <laughs> you got any pudding? Forget pudding, John. I've got a little surprise for you. Yeah, I've got some of your rugby friends together to sing a little song for you. Good night! <laughs>If you feel the need for a spot of Harry any time you want him, then grab TV Burp Gold 3. It's available now on DVD. Right, coming up, both families have got £100,000 to play with, but who'll get to keep their cash? Anton Dex, push the button, is next. I love someone who bites children.